important topic as well, you know. I'd like to share with you this morning a topic or a sermon that I have entitled Maintaining a Healthy Heart. Maintaining a Healthy Heart. Now, just as it is good physically, it is even better and best to maintain not only a good physical healthy heart, but most of all, maintain and develop a good and healthy spiritual heart. Amen. Because our physical heart one day will come, it will stop beating. It will stop and our life will end. But that person inside of you, that person that has been reborn, will remain forever. So just as we have been concentrating and building up a healthy body, it is an even greater importance for us to maintain a healthier spiritual life through the condition of our heart. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father God, once again, let this not be just an inspirational talk, because we can hear inspirational talks anywhere. But let it, this be a life transforming rhema God spoken message into our hearts this morning. Let it pierce through our physical ears down to our mind and down to our heart. And Father God, I pray in the name of your son Jesus that this sermon will penetrate us in a way that nobody can except your Holy Spirit working in and through our lives. Bless this sermon. Bless every one of us. Cover this place with your most precious blood. And we will never fail to give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please open with me to 1 Samuel chapter 16, 1 to 13. And this is the story when the prophet Samuel was ordained or mandated by God to choose the next king over Israel. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, saying, I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Remember, the present king of Israel is Saul, because the nation of Israel demanded the king. Fill your horn with oil and go, I'm sending it to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king amongst his son. Verse 2. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Verse 3. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I name to you. You know what? One thing I like with God is that Sometimes, there are times he will just tell you to go. And while on the process of going, he will tell you what to do. Which is quite different naturally because sometimes before we go, we should know first why and who and what. right? But with God, God said, okay, go there, I'll tell you what to do. How many of us will do that if we do not really know the God that we serve, or the one that told you so. Oh, I tell Ryan, punta ka doon. Sige, pagdating ko na, sinig siya ako na gagawin mo. I don't think Ryan will go. Masabihin niya, Pastor, just tell me first, ano ba ang gagawin ko doon? Para alam ko naman. But with God, he would just tell, like Abraham, he said, go to a land that I will show you. I will show you. Okay? Verse 5. Oh. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? Somehow they, somehow they're afraid of the prophets in the Old Testament because they're, most of them are prophets of gloom and gloom. You know? Verse 5. Then he said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse, or he separated Jesse and his sons, and invite them, invited them to the sacrifice. Verse 6. So it was when they came 
that he looked at Elia and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Verse 7. But the Lord collect, corrected, corrected Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at this, because he, he was a prophet Samuel, so Elia, Elia good looking, kingly in appearance. Mukang ang dating hari, pero wala sa dating. Asa puso. Okay? Do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature. So alam niyo yung mga pastor, magagaling na mag-preach yan. Spiritual yan. Bonus na lang yung foggy. Bihira lang kami. Hindi lahat katulad namin. Okay? Buti may mga kumay na. Do not look at his appearance or his physical stature because I have refused him. Oh, worst thing that can happen in your life is for the Lord to refuse you. For the Lord, look at this, for the Lord does not see as a man sees. For the man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. The Lord looks at the heart. Now let's stop here. Let's not continue anymore. Later on, if you continue to read this story, he anointed David because God said, he's the man. Anoint him. But one thing I'd like to emphasize on this verse is the latter part of this verse that man looks at the outward appearance, but God or the Lord looks at the heart. There is no other area in our life that the Lord looks at except our heart. So my challenge with you this morning, brothers and sisters, hopers, is that let us focus on that one single solitary area in our life where the Lord looks at. And it's not our appearance. It's not how good we look. It's not how good we dress up. But it is the condition of our heart. That is the only thing that God looks upon. And He knows your heart. You may put up a facade. You may put up Something good in your physical. But God knows what is the content of your heart. So if there is anything, kung meron man tayong dapat na pag bigyan ng panahon at concentration in our Christian growth, we should focus on what kind of heart do we have. Dahil yun lang pala ang tinitignan ng Diyos now, out of the abundance of the heart, you will have a window of what kind of heart a person has. By the way he speaks, by the way he acts, by the way he behaves. Diba? But then again, sometimes words can deceive, actions can deceive, but somehow it gives you, it gives you a glimpse of what kind of heart. And sometimes hindi talaga natin pwedeng itago. Pag mali ang puso mo, mali talaga. Mali ang pananalita mo. Mali pa rin ang pagdawa mo. It all flows down from the heart. Let me give you some uh, Bible verses. Let's go to our next slide on my, on my topic. Well, you have heard this saying, they say the heart of the matter is a matter of heart. Right? The heart of every matter is the matter of the heart. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, in NASB version, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, in New Living Translation Bible, it says, above all else. Meron po bang tataas above all else? Is there anything higher than above all else? No, nothing anymore. So, in New Living Translation, the Bible says, Above all else, guard your heart. Guard your heart. For it affects everything you do. Make sense? Amen. Amen. Nandun pala nakatingin. Nandun pala ang mga corresponding actions natin. So how can we maintain a healthy heart? Now physically, what do you do? Let's go to our next 
next slide. When we speak about maintaining a physical heart, we use the word avoid. Avoid the fatty foods. Avoid baboy. Avoid pork, bacon. And we, we, we hear the word run. Run away from bacon. <laughs> run away from, pig, from pork. From pig. <laughs> Now, run means also running. Yeah? It's a good, it's a good uh, uh, thing to maintain a healthy heart. And we, we hear the word intake. Hey, if you want to maintain a healthy heart, watch your intake. Watch the food that you eat. Because what you eat is what you are and who you are. I'm going to, you know. If you eat unhealthy food, then you will not be unhealthy. You will, you will not be healthy. And we heard the words count. Count your calories. <laughs> count the carbs. How many calories? You, you, now, now here in America, every time you go to the restaurant, they have they have the the, the numbers for calories, Eva, right? You know? When you order, oh, how many calories is this? How many even in McDonald's now they have listed how much calories? Not in crab boy. <laughs> I know, I think they have to in crab boil, you know? A few thousand calories per <laughs> But it's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> you can bow in and then it's good. <laughs> then we hear the word exercise. So maintaining a physical healthy heart, you, you uh, uh, somehow hear these words, avoid, run, intake, and exercise, which is, kung babasahin nyo, arise. A rice. A rice. Now, so let me give you five basic important lessons on how we can maintain a healthy heart. Number one, <laughs> have a regular intake of God's word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live. Everybody say, Live. live. Did it say man shall not be happy? Did it say man shall not be contented? Does it say man shall not be peaceful? No. It used the word live means survival. Right? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. If you can believe that your physical food will keep you alive, then we should also believe that spiritual food will keep us alive. In the same way, if you know that if you do not eat, you die, then we should also believe that if we do not eat the word of God, our spirits will die. It's the same parallel. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, this is very, this is very popular, but again, we should remind ourselves, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate. Everybody say meditate. Meditate. Meditate cooks the raw word into a cooked food. Reading is just reading it like a book. But the Bible is not being, it should not be read. It should be meditated upon. Hello? Amen. Ang Biblia hindi lang ginungo yan, nilululun, kundi talagang ginungo yan. Ninanam nam. So the Bible, when you read the Bible, don't read it as an ordinary book. Meditate. Now how do you meditate? Read it again and again and again. Read the five verses before, five verses after, so you can know the contextualized message. Because this is, this is the word that Joshua used. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written on it, in it. Then you will make your way prosperous. How many wants to be prosperous? Amen. At least a few of you once again. And demonio nakatingin. How many of you wants to be prosperous? Amen. And you will have good success. Everybody say good. Good, good success. If there is good success, there is. Bad. What is bad success? Gaining all the material wealth, popularity, and everything without Jesus Christ. That's bad success. But good success means more than being successful, you're blessed. 
Tell your neighbor, you're blessed. So the key towards true prosperity, the key towards good success, and the key to maintain a healthy heart is have a regular intake of God's Word. God's Word. Nothing should replace it. No Christian books should replace it. Only the Bible. Our next verse is in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, 20 to 22. My son gave attention to my words. Incline, everybody's inclined. <laughs> incline takes an effort. Because <clears throat> when you incline, it takes an effort. Because when you incline, it takes an effort. Because inclining means Incline your ear to my sayings, 21. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 22. For they are life to those that find them. Hallelujah. And health to all their flesh. You know how you can simply interpret the Bible or expound the Bible? <clears throat> University. It, this is how I interpret the Bible. This is how I, I uh, <laughs> For they are death to those who don't find them, and sickness. Clearly now? More clear now? For you to know what is handsome, look at someone ugly. <laughs> if you want to know what is ugly, look at the pastors of hope. <laughs> In the same way, the Word of God is life to those that find them. So if you don't have the Word of God in you, you're, you're dead. If you're not keeping the Word of God in your heart, then it can provide you with sickness. Because meditating the Word of God, keeping them in your heart, maintaining a good heart through the Word of God is life and it is help to your flesh. It's one thing to be healed. It's another thing to have a healthy life. Iba yung pinagaling ka lang, iba yung hindi ka nagkakasakit. Dahil hindi pinagpala ng perfect God. So have a regular intake of God's word. It's a must. Not only for pastors, not only for leaders, not only for volunteers, for everyone. For every all. And, and you can have the Bible anywhere now. You don't have any excuse. I don't have a Bible. If you have a smartphone, you have a Bible there. And we talk about survival. Man shall not live by bread alone. Read your Bible. Read it. Don't make it as a sleeping pill every time at night. Ay, yung matulog. Pagbabasa na lang muna ng Bible. <laughs> so have a regular intake of God's word. Number two, how to maintain a healthy heart. Number two, <clears throat> I go pound. In maintaining a spiritual, a good spiritual heart, do not count your calories, but count your blessings. Count your blessings. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 8. Let's read that first. Blessed be the God of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has <coughs> blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to say, you're blessed. Yes. Every spiritual blessing, verse 4. 
Just as he had chosen us before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and not blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us to the adoptions as sons by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. That's a blessing. We are accepted in the beloved. That's a blessing. <coughs> In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now don't count your blessings as, oh, I have this, I have that. Don't count the blessings that are that, that you have in your hands. Count the blessings that are in your hands. Because they are richer. They cannot be stolen. Like being saved, being a child of God. Having the peace that passes all understanding, translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, being forgiven. Those are bigger blessings. Amen? So count those, when we count our blessings, don't only count our new car, our new house, our new girlfriend, or, no. Count those blessings that are spiritual inside your heart. Verse 8. Which he had made us abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Ephesians chapter 3, our next verse. Verse 20. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, everybody say exceedingly. Exceedingly. Abundantly, everybody say abundantly. Abundantly. Above all. Above all. Exceedingly abundant. Look at those adjectives. Adjectives, what are they? Superlatives. Exceeding. Our God is able to do exceeding. I was talking to someone. Someone who received a big blessing in life. That few years ago they were just dreaming about it, but now physically it is theirs. And I told him, in hope for the world, dreams come true. Amen. Hello? Amen. Dreams come Not only in Los Angeles, but in Balasing. <laughs> dreams, wildest dreams come true. And you can say it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask. Can you think of something God can do above that? Think of something God can do beyond that. That's a blessing, Diva. According to the power. What's that power? Faith. According to the power that works in you. You have a power that works in you. What is that? Faith. Faith. Believe and you will receive. Amen. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Now unto him who is able to exceedingly abundantly count our blessings. Next uh, 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 Bible verse. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and forever. Next hope. Now in Luke chapter 10, let me give you a background. God, Jesus Christ commissioned the 70 disciples. They said, go to the towns, heal the sick, perform miracles. Now when they come back to the Lord, they were very happy. They were very glad. You know? Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name because they went out to the towns, right? And they're driving out demons. So they were very happy. They reported to the Lord when they came back and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Look at what the Lord told them in verse 18. And he said, I saw Satan like a lightning from heaven. Fall. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, I give you authority to trample on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. This is the thing. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this. What is that? This that the, the demons are subject to you. Don't rejoice in that. 
You see miracles, you see the blind, see, you see the lame walk, you see all these miracles. Jesus said, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. Now, how many of you here believe that your names are written in heaven? Look at your hands. Well, at least some are still going to, I don't know. So, read our greatest praise. Our greatest rejoicing is not because we're driving a new car. It's not because we have the best trophy wife or something. It's not because we have the best job in the world. Not because... Not even because you have the best church in the entire world. Not because you even have the best pastors in the world. Those are all bonuses. Let us rejoice. <laughs> because we are all going to heaven. Let us rejoice because our names are written in the book of life. That's our greatest blessing. It will give you a healthy heart if you continue to count your blessings. Our greatest blessings are the ones that we keep in our hearts. Avoid complaining. Don't be jealous of other people's blessings. Like there was this <coughs> friend. They were talking to each other and friend number one said, I'm sad. Friend number two said, why are you sad? From well, a month ago, my grandfather died. And he left me with $200,000 inheritance. And you said, yes, I'm sad. Why? Oh, because three weeks ago, my, my long lost aunt, auntie, different state, I have not met her. She died and gave me an inheritance of $5,000. I'm sad. Yes, you're sad. I'm sad because two weeks ago, my uncle died and gave me a million dollars in inheritance. I'm sad. Yeah, you're sad? Yes. Because two weeks ago, my millionaire cousin died and left me his mansion free, uh, fully paid. And I'm sad. You're sad? Yes. Why are you sad? Because last week, Nothing happened. <laughs> In spite of the many things that you have received some couple of weeks ago, just because nothing happened last week, you're sad. That's not true for all of us. Even the puppy is saying amen. <laughs> So let us rejoice and count our blessing because our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We are blessed. Amen. Count your blessing. Good. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Do not be jealous of other people's blessings. You don't know what's happening with their lives. So that's the second reminder. Number three. So the first one is what? Intake of God's word, regular intake of God's word. Number two? After blessing number three. Exercise your passion in helping others. And we, you know, in hope for the world, we are well exercised. Hallelujah. In this church, the pastors will see to it that all hopers are very fit in our passion, in exercising our passions to help others. Amen? Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17 says, He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He who, some, some Bible, some Bible translation says, He who lends to the poor gives to the, lends to the Lord. And the Lord will pay back what he has given. That's why higher form of charity, higher form of helping people is helping those who, can, who cannot pay you back. Because if they cannot pay you back, be more glad and be happier because the Lord himself.
himself will be the one to pay you back. Because yeah. yeah. he said, if he would help and say, say, oh, because he would help me back. But for us, when we give our mission pledges, when we give our collections, when we give uh, 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 to the missions, these people, we don't even know them. Well, some of them we saw, we, we see at our Facebook pages, and our Peter Gophers. We don't even know them. But thank God, because of this verse, He who lends to the poor, He who has pity to the poor, lends to the Lord. And who will pay you back? The Lord will pay you back. The next verse is, let's not read that, it's about the Samaritan, the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. You all know the story, right? Let us grab every opportunity to show kindness. Every day. Every day. Maybe it'll just be a word to a coworker, a nice word to someone, just a simple dollar to a homeless guy, buying coffee from someone. About two weeks ago, I, I I'm about to visit the patient in Inglewood, and uh, it's lunchtime, so I said, let me just uh, grab a bite. So I entered McDonald's in Inglewood, and this home, this homeless guy opened the door for me. And you know that in, say McDonald's, they don't hire someone to open the door <laughs> for you, you know? So, so I, I asked him, do you want a sandwich? Do you have, do you want a food. And he said, yes, thank you. God bless you. He was even the first one who said, God bless you to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought him a sandwich and a drink. And I gave it to him. And, and, and you can see the glow in his eyes. He stopped asking for something. He had just opened the door. You know. But for us, Christians, let us be agents of kindness, agents of generosity, and agents of someone who helped. We can never really know the joy of living a life here on earth unless we learn how to help others. <clears throat> and somehow we help not because we have overflow. We help because we know that God will God is pleased 